All right, guys. In this video, this video may be geared more towards the new player uh, than than the veterans. But veterans, you'll hopefully find something uh, about this vlog too. And I'm actually talking about formations. And if you're new, you've probably gone to your local store and you're looking around and you're hearing people, you know, other players, your buddies, start talking, well, I'm running this formation, or I'm running that formation. And you're just nodding your head saying, okay. And deep down, you're probably thinking, what is a formation? And basically what a formation is, it, well, let, let me rewind a little bit. Back in 6th edition, every army was limited by a combined arms detachment. Basically, it meant you had to bring one, at least one HQ and two troop choices. Then you could fill out the rest of your army how you wanted, provided you fit each slot. And you were only limited to certain numbers of slots. Such as, I think, total, you could have, I think, up to five troop choices. You could have a maximum of two HQs. And then you could have three elite, three fast attack, three heavy support. So, when 7th edition came around, and we started seeing the new codex come out. New codexes. Such as Necrons, Space Wolves, Blood Angels, Space Marines. We then started to see a lot more formations. So, what's a formation? Formation, now, is basically... Here is... It's an army build that you have already predetermined number of units. So, let's see, for example, I'll do the Necron to Curian to ta uh, formation. What it basically is, it's an overlord with, I believe it's a squad, minimum squad, and these are all minimum numbers. A squad of three Tomb Blades. A squad of five Immortals. And two squads of... Of Warriors. And I believe... Don't quote me on this, but I believe... A unit of Lich Guard is also in there. I might be wrong about that. But I know the others are right. So that is predetermined. And that costs X number of points. So if you're doing... I, I want to say if you're doing a 2,000 point game, that's almost 1,000 points. That, that gives you the rest of your points to either add additional units... So you could add a second squad of Tomb Blades. You could add another one or two squads of Warriors. You could add Lich Guard or Triarch Praetorians. Maybe a Monolith. Whatever you wanted. And... Or, you know, put upgrades. Increase squad size. You could do it within that context within that frame and that's basically what a formation was it was a frame that had certain elements already put together for you and gave you the ability to kind of put together the rest of that frame into the army that you ended up wanting to play And with these formations, certain formations give that particular army special rules or special abilities. 
I'll take a couple of good ones for you. The Decurion Detachment. The biggest rule for the Decurion. Well, well, any formation, really. But every unit that's in the Decurion Detachment for Necrons has objective secure. So, basically, back in 6th edition, under the old CAD, Combined Iron Detachment for, uh, concept, only the troop choices, unless the mission, which at the time, the Eternal War missions, stated otherwise, could only hold objectives and score points, or were scoring units. Now, that being said... With these formations, everything in the in the formation can hold objectives. So the immortals could hold objectives. Of course, their troop choices anyway. Warriors, if you brought a ghost arc or arcs with the warriors, they could hold objectives. The tomb blades could hold objectives. Or another special rule, like for Grey Knights, their one formation that they have, the Nemesis Strike Force, allows their entire excuse me, allows their entire army to deep strike on turn one. If they have the ability to deep strike. Everything so we're talking interceptors, we're talking terminators, we're talking paladins, we're talking nemesis dread knights, even storm raven, their flyers could deep strike. And I'll probably cover green knights in another video a little bit more in depth probably later on. But formations, we didn't really... If you look back, when the Grey Knight Codex came out, back about midway in 6th edition, because I started playing about halfway through 6th edition. It was just before, uh, just a little bit before the Space Marine Codex came out in 6th. So, the Grey Knight... Codex came out, and they had the Nemesis Strike Force formation, which I thought was pretty cool. But at the time, didn't really have any interest in getting into Grey Knights. Now I'm actually into Grey Knights, but that's another story. But then you started seeing various the only other time really in 6th edition that you saw formations was in the Apocalypse book and there are some pretty cool formations in the Apocalypse book let me tell you I have it the but really you then started to see more and more formations, really formations start taking over once 7th edition was released. And a lot of the formations I've seen, some I haven't, I think are pretty cool. And one of the other benefits to the formation is you can actually pick already essentially again, pre-selected what's called auxiliary formations. And, um, again, using Necrons as an example, they have one that's called the Tech Harvest, which is basically a Tomb Spider, a minimum squad of three Wraiths, and I believe it's a minimum squad of three bases of Scarabs. That's a formation, an auxiliary formation. And there are others, and maybe, when, maybe at some point I'll look and kind of break down some of these other some of these common formations and the auxiliaries and give you my take on them 
there are some, though, that would be a little bit more difficult for me to really discuss, like Eldar. But that's a whole nother story as well. But you now see more and more of these formations coming out. And right now, the common ones I've been seeing, and I've been watching some battle reports on YouTube, either MiniWarGaming.com, maybe um, Striking Scorpions, uh, just some other ones here and there. And I've been watching, and I've been seeing a lot of Decurion detachments for Necrons. I've seen a couple of Demi companies for Space Marines, which I want to try because I have quite. Well, I have just about every formation that you can do. There are a few I don't have. So that's out there. Now, are we veterans? Are we seeing more of a push towards formations? You know, is GW really wanting us to play more formations to maybe... I'm not... You, I don't want to say force us. Because that would be a little too strong. But maybe put us in a position to play with certain units that we may not normally play. So that's a question I want, want to hear from you guys about. Not that running a combined arms is bad. There's certainly a lot of flexibility, a lot of feasibility to it. But some, but in my mind, depending on the army you're going up against, it feels like if you are running a combined arm detachment and you're going to go up against an army that's, you know, a buddy that's going to use a formation, like the Decurion detachment or a Demi Company... It's probably going to end very bad for you. So, what do you guys think? Is formations the new way to go? Or do you still want to hang on to your combined arms because it's been your lists have been so good to you or bad? To this point that you don't really want to try and experiment with different things. 